Hello, uh, my name is Rob Sherritt, and uh, I'm here today to uh, talk to you about something that uh, I'm very passionate about. And uh, I know what God has done uh, for me in my life with Lisa. Um, and so I would like to share something with you. I am not doing this for, for the purpose of the church or council or even pastor. Um, my purpose here is for you, um, for your love of God and what, what God wants um, for you and God. That's what I, my passion is, is for you. Um, and I'll explain. Um, many years ago, if I was to tell you um, that 25 years ago, it was actually 25 years ago, um, I was living in my car. Um, I had rented a, a, a room which from someone, and they, while I was gone, they left and took all my stuff. I had nothing, nothing left other than the clothes on my back and what little stuff I had in my car. Um, I was working at a job at the hospital making $4.47 an hour. Um, so I literally had nothing. Um, I didn't have family here. Uh, I had a couple of friends. Um, so, um, it was a very dark time for me and I, and I don't want to get into all the other things. That's not what this talk is about, but by all means, if you ever want to talk about it, feel free to come to me and I'll be happy to talk to you about it. But what I want to talk about is moving forward from that point. Um, I, uh, was working at the hospital and I progressively, um, you know, worked my way up, got a little bit better job. Um, a friend of mine helped me, um, let me move in with him, helped me get a little bit on my feet. I, I got a, even a better job. Um, and uh, I was hanging out with a, a friend of mine whose parents were, um, would invite me over for dinner, knew that I was kind of down. And uh, so I'd go over there and, and then they started inviting me to go to church. And uh, so I, I started going back to church and going with them and, and things were, were getting better. Um, got a new job, um, got a, a, you know, a really good job, um, working for a company. And, uh, so I got my own place. Um, so things were getting better, um, going to church occasionally. Um, and then I, uh, I met Lisa and, um, we started dating and then, uh, we got engaged and uh, decided to get married. Um, so two years after our first date, we ended up getting married. Um, so I went from being single, nobody, and now um, I'm married and I have three kids because Lisa had three from a previous marriage. And uh, so that was a challenge in itself. So when, when we decided to get married, uh, I said, well, we're going to need more help. And I, I can't do this on my own. Um, so we started growing our faith together. Uh, Lisa was not much of a church goer at the time either. And we started going to church together and, and we started growing our faith, uh, went to a, a small church and um, we would, um, you know, about a year after we got married, we decided to build a house. We built a house. Uh, the two of us had, you know, decent jobs. We had good jobs. Um, and but, you know, like every young couple, you, you want to buy a house. So we bought a house. And so now we have a mortgage. And then we um, had cars. So we had car payments and, uh, and three kids. And then lo and behold, a year later, we find out we're going to have twins. So now I go from single. Now I have, we're going to have five kids in the house. And uh, talk about stressful. Talk about... A challenge. Um, so, like every good parents or uh, families, we want to provide as much as we can um, for these kids. So, what was happening is, is that you know we'd be building up this credit card uh, because we we weren't just living paycheck to paycheck. We were living paycheck to paycheck to credit card, and um, you know it, we were doing what we had to do or what we felt we had to do. Um, so the credit card started piling up and uh, then, you know, we'd max one out and then we get this great offer and it'd say, um, switch uh, this over for 0% interest. And so we would do that. And then next thing you know, we're, uh, 
we're using that other card again. And so it just kept going on and on. And um, you would not believe, but we, um, we ended up probably with four or five different credit cards and they would all get maxed out on top of the mortgage and the two car payments. Um, it, was, it was actually embarrassing. Um, so, and all while, you know, we've been going to church and, and we're, we're, you know, we hear, uh, different things about, you know, tithing and, and we would tithe and we would, um, not tithe, I'm sorry. We would give our offering to church and what we would do is we'd get our paycheck and we would, um, pay all our bills and then we, okay, what do we got left for church? And it would basically be nothing. And so that was our giving to church and we really weren't trusting in God and we weren't you know doing what we're supposed to we were going to church yeah we were building that um, relationship with God but we weren't really trusting him and then I heard this uh, we we heard this Bible verse it's actually a Proverbs um, and it's Proverbs 3 5 and 6 and it says trust in the Lord with all your heart do not depend on your own understanding um, seek his will in all you do and he will direct your paths. That was the problem. We were doing, trying to figure it out on our own and not trusting him, his understanding and what he wants. So that was a big change for us. And when we started thinking and, you know, we had a pastor at the time and he would, he was directing us in this way and uh, it, something just clicked in us. And we said, you know what, we can't do this without God. And we were trying to you know, let him help us, but we weren't trusting him on everything. And that was the one thing that we weren't. And trust me, we fought. This was probably one of the biggest sore things uh, in our in our relationship was finance because we were struggling so much, just like pretty much anybody else. So what we decided to do is we're going to trust him. And what we did, we sit down and get our pay and we put it into the checkbook and go in front of the computer. And what we st decided to do was, is we sat down and prayed. And I said, Lord, allow me to be a good steward with the blessings that you give us. And then we would take our tithe out first. And I'll never forget it. It was incredible that we would start taking out our tithe first. And guess what? Uh, it was unbelievable. It was unbelievable that we never went without. It always worked out. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not going to say it was glory. We struggled. We, you know, we had our problems. We had our issues because we're so far behind. But you know what? It was different this time. We weren't fighting about it. We weren't um, arguing. We weren't. Um, we were trusting God this time, and and everything would always work out. And like sometimes we would even be like say, you know, $50 short on something. But next day, some refund would come in the mail and was like, praise God, because we needed that 50 bucks. And it's amazing when we started trusting God and letting him, um, trusting his, his path and, and not waiting to the end. We'd give him his, our first fruits. That's, we heard one of the things is we're supposed to give God first and then after, uh, then um, we pay everything else. And it was amazing. And I remember my dad telling me one time, he's never gone without because he was, a, him and my mom were tithers. And that always stuck in my head. And then with, you know, the, uh, with the church and, and everything. So it was from then on, we just, you know, did we get out of debt right away? No. Did we not have, we'd fall back sometimes, oh, we would slip and then, but we'd get back on it and start tithing again. And, and you know, you always have those struggles. Point is, every time we trusted God, it always worked out. And then years later, um, it was now, it's been 11, 12 years ago, um, opportunity came for me to buy a business. And um, I left a good job. I was making $80,000 a year. I mean, and but I felt that God was saying, this is what I want to do. This is what he wants me to do. And what it did is gave me freedom to not only, um, you know, bless others, but I mean, besides me being blessed, I was able to bless others with this business. And um, somebody needed carpet cleaning. I'd say, yeah, go ahead, go, I'll go clean their carpet for free. Or it gave me that opportunity to do those things. 
And we've been blessed and, and from time buying that business and never looking back, God just continued to bless us. And we felt, we to this day, we feel blessed beyond belief. And uh, I can't, uh, I can't stress that enough and um, because we started putting our trust in him and, and not ourselves um, and anytime we started to go in ourselves we'd always fall back behind again um, so that was a uh, one instance that you know I saw clear as day how God has blessed us because we started tithing we started, we started giving we, we we have this joy in our hearts uh, from um, being able to bless others because we've been blessed so much and God keeps blessing us in, in a tremendous way because we're, we're giving to Him. It's just constantly going and uh, we just feel tremendously blessed. Um, I'll give you another for instance. Um, we were at that church and we decided to go to another church. The girls were like about four years old and we wanted to go to another church that was growing, maybe some kids and, and, and that kind of thing. And um, so as usual, we we get uh, involved in the church. You know, we, we start helping out, we doing things and getting involved, and um, things were going. You know, things were going good. Um, but they then they asked me if I would be on council, and um, I said, okay, I'll I'll go on council. And um, then they said, well, we want you to be in charge of stewardship. And I was like, okay, I, I I'll do stewardship. And I started looking, and, and this was a small church. Their budget was probably around 100000 maybe a little more. Um, and um, they had their issues, too. I mean, just like they were struggling. And uh, it turns out that they were um, between about five, four or five months behind on their mortgage, um, their electric bill, their phone bills, uh, uh, various other things. It ended up to be about $20,000 behind. And um, so I'll never forget it. The first um, meeting we had, it was in January, late January, and they, um, they wanted me to do stewardship. And uh, I said to them, okay, but um, we need to start tithing as a church um, because uh, something's not going right here. We, they were doing two to three percent and uh, they, they pretty much fought me on it. We actually... It was one of the longest council meetings that I uh, uh, was ever at, and it was probably about four, at least four hours long, trying to convince them that we should start tithing. And finally, after my persistence and, and everything, they uh, agreed to um, start tithing. And uh, I'll tell you, after that moment in January, throughout the year, the, the, the culture just changed in our church. It was, people were having were joy and they were wanting to give to help us get caught up. And they, it was just the whole mentality of the church. It was not about uh, them. It was not about the debt or being behind. It was about giving and feeling joyful about it and, and want to succeed. Um, and the whole change in the whole, the whole year, and I'll, I'll be honest with you, the end of that year, the week in between Christmas and New Year's, it was a Sunday, and they announced to the congregation that we were 100% caught up on all our bills. That $20,000 deficit was gone. And not only that is, is that that year we also raised $5,000 for a new street sign for the church that we needed. So we had gone, we, we had gone from 20,000, totally took care of that plus the 5,000, so $25,000 because we made that commitment and we trusted in God. It was a transformation that was unbelievable. And uh, the joy and everybody, it was just like we all were coming together. It was such a great experience um, for that. And my point of telling you these stories is, like I said, not, not to, for me to brag or not to boast or whatever it may be. It's I want you to experience that same joy that those people in the church were having when they were giving. Uh, the same joy that Lisa and I have. We have so much joy in giving and, and helping others because God has just blessed us tremendously. We have a beautiful family. We have five kids. We have six grandchildren. We have been blessed beyond belief. And I want you as a congregation to, to experience that same joy as we have. 
And that's why I'm telling you this, for no other reason, for you to feel the joy of God and release that pain of, of trying to worry about um, where the next thing's going to be paid or whatever it may be. Um, when we trust God, things get taken care of. Now, I'm going to read you one more thing that really challenged me and really spoke to me um, many years ago. And um, it's in Malachi 3, verse 10. And it says, bring all your tithes into the storehouse, so there will be enough food in my temple. If you do, says the Lord Almighty, I will open the windows of heaven for you. I will pour out a blessing so great you won't have enough room to take it in. Try it. Let me prove it to you. Right there, he, God is challenging us to test him. He's saying, I dare you. Bring your tithe, and I will pour out the blessings that you won't be able to handle. And I've always, and you know what? That's held so true to Lisa and I. And it is just unbelievable how that works. So that's why I'm telling you this. So now what I want to share with you is that you all should have received in the mail, or if you haven't, you will. Um, what we've decided to do as a church is challenge you. Um, from now until January 1st, we want you to give a tithe, to start tithing and tithe your first fruits. If you don't feel blessed by the end of that 10 weeks or whatever it is, we will give you back 100% of your money. But I promise you, if you do this, if you do it prayerfully and do it, you will be blessed. But again, if you don't, we will give back your 100% uh, of what you gave in that time frame. Thank you for listening to me. God bless each and every one of you. And God bless this church.